Right-wing conspiracy theories have long been the background radiation of the conservative movement in the United States. Paranoia about communists hiding in every closet helped galvanize conservatives in the 1950s. The John Birch Society spread the conspiracy theory that President Dwight Eisenhower was behind a communist conspiracy to sabotage the United States from within. Moral panics of the 1980s about devil worship helped the religious right gain a greater foothold in politics. The Republican Party played along, acknowledging in private how these voters played into their hands while shrugging them off in public. During the Barack Obama administration, at the height of the birther conspiracy theory, the President of the United States had to release his birth certificate to the public. Republican response was feigned innocence about this right-wing conspiracy theory. Why even do this? This is a distraction, House Republicans said, knowing full well that they had benefited from this delegitimization of their political opponent for the past several years. Traditionally, a right-wing conspiracy theory begins with a half-truth or a reference to a real event, but with a secret hidden agenda. The greater context or details that debunk this theory are either ignored or labeled propaganda. To a conspiracy theorist, any attempt to debunk the conspiracy theory must be part of the cover-up. This allows the conspiracy theorist to continue believing no matter how often the claim is fact-checked or proven false. For example, the birther conspiracy begins with a real event, the birth of Barack Obama. It utilizes some truths, such as Obama's father being Kenyan, but spirals out into falsehoods after that, all of which have been disproved and discredited over the years by fact-checkers and researchers. Right-wing conspiracy theorists believe in birtherism not because the evidence is compelling, but because the theory feels culturally true to them. It reinforces their pre-existing political belief about the duplicity of anyone to their left, and their pre-existing racist belief about the criminality of African Americans. Endorsement of a conspiracy theory is a form of motivated, false reasoning that is used to protect an individual's pre-existing worldview. In recent years, that traditional conspiracy theory model has been turned on its head. Now, a conspiracy theory can flourish even without the half-truth or the real event. Instead, a conspiracy theory can gain a great deal of traction simply through repetition, by being adopted by someone in a position of power, or both. In their book, A Lot of People Are Saying, authors Nancy L. Rosenblum and Russell Muirhead described this new conspiracism as conspiracy without the theory. Donald Trump's popularity on social media allowed him to create conspiracies out of whole cloth and legitimize them through repetition of his followers, through shares and likes and retweets. If a lot of people are saying it, and the President of the United States is endorsing it, the conspiracy theory has the illusion of being credible, no matter how incredible the claim. Even with Trump no longer in office, other well-known Republicans are running with these conspiracies without theories. Senator Ted Cruz, Rudy Giuliani, and others are pushing the election conspiracy theory. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy and others are using the term deep state. Right-wing conspiracy theories are propagated by two forms of bad actors, the manipulators and the true believers. The manipulators are usually the politicians, the pundits, and others in power. The believers are the targets of this manipulation, the voters, the conservative base. It would be naive to think that Donald Trump sincerely believed his invented conspiracy theories. However, on occasion, the manipulator is also the true believer, someone who fell down the rabbit hole of right-wing conspiracy theories and who later achieved some political power and continued to spread the theories out of a partly sincere but completely misguided and wrong-headed belief. The most obvious example of this today is Marjorie Taylor Greene, Republican Congresswoman representing the 14th District of Georgia. The sincerity of her wrong beliefs is not something to be admired, even in principle. It only shows her to be more dangerous and even more gullible than the traditional manipulators. She calls for the execution of her political rivals, harasses teenage survivors of school shootings, and engages in the most nonsensical buffoonery perhaps ever seen in United States politics. 
Nevertheless, she has a vote in the House of Representatives, a microphone to broadcast her outlandish beliefs, and her party is not particularly interested in stopping her. The idea that Green is only a symptom of a larger problem is both true and misleading. Green is a symptom of a broader right-wing conspiracy culture, but she is not a mere spectator in that culture. We have to ask ourselves some questions. What does Green believe? Why does she believe it? Why won't her own party do anything about it? And what can we do to prevent the flow of misinformation and the destruction of truth? A common misperception of right-wing conspiracy theorists is that they are poor, uneducated, white trash. But this is a classist stereotype. The far right is actually often funded and motivated by wealthy benefactors, and the true believers are often suburban, middle-class whites. Remember, conspiracy theorists accept their bizarre worldview because it feels culturally true to them, not simply due to a lack of higher education, Marjorie Taylor Greene's father, Robert, owned Taylor Commercial, a prime contractor responsible for the oversight of construction. Greene's family could afford to send her to the University of Georgia, a well-respected institution. She earned a business degree. In 2002, her father sold Taylor Commercial to Marjorie and her husband, Perry Greene. The future congresswoman did not vote for president in 2008 or 2012, but the candidacy of Donald Trump in 2016 energized her and motivated her to seek out like-minded conservatives on the internet. In 2017, her search led her to write for American Truth Seekers, a now-defunct conspiracy theory website, and Law Enforcement Today, a police propaganda website. Mixed in with her conspiracies were garden-variety right-wing talking points, in one article for Law Enforcement Today, Green warned of an incredible amount of migrants and drugs invading the country. The article came complete with pictures and grainy videos that allegedly proved her claims. As her articles continued, they became more and more unhinged. For example, an article for Law Enforcement Today was about how Beto O'Rourke, back when he was 15 years old, wrote a short story about two children being run over by a car which is true, but Green's interpretation of this was that this alone made O'Rourke unqualified for office, and that writing this fiction when he was a teenager means that he is now secretly a violent murderer. Who knows what she must think of Stephen King? Eventually, Green turned her attention to guns, more specifically to conspiracy theories about school shootings. The conspiracy theorist right has long spread the idea that many of the most prominent mass shootings do not actually occur and that they are false flags staged by crisis actors. Alex Jones of Infowars infamously said this about the Sandy Hook massacre. Green speculated that the tragic Las Vegas mass shooting of 2017 was also staged. In general, this theory can be debunked through common sense and critical thinking alone. In order for Sandy Hook or Las Vegas to be staged, an incredible amount of people would have to be involved. Entire communities full of actors would have to be created. Cemeteries, schools, law enforcement, public officials, every local news station, almost every other national news station, many figures within a political party, and more would have to be complicit and with no real evidence uncovered. Experts and mathematicians have conclusively shown that the more people know about a conspiracy, the shorter the amount of time it would take for it to be exposed. Conspiracies do happen. Any time more than one person collaborates on a crime or scheme, it's a conspiracy. But widespread conspiracies are exposed dependent on how many people know about it. The CIA, for example, has been involved in a number of horrendous and bizarre conspiracies over the course of the last century, but they only remain secret for so long, and even when they are exposed, they are whitewashed as necessary. So yes, conspiracies do happen, but not the kind of hair-brained conspiracies that Marjorie Taylor Greene talks about. Greene has taken a more active role in rooting out these so-called false flags. In 2019, Green confronted and harassed David Hogg, a survivor of the Parkland school shooting. Over the next two years, through her articles and Facebook posts, Green focused her attention on prominent Democrats, spreading nonsense about a Hillary Clinton assassination list and the debunked Seth Rich murder theory. 
Green called for the murder or execution of Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry, and Nancy Pelosi. Everything from the ludicrous Pizzagate to the lesser-known Frazzle Drip theory about Hillary Clinton mutilating a child on a videotape that does not actually exist. Many of Green's theories are tied to her Christian faith, often engaging in Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. Green believes in various anti-Semitic theories about a space laser that annihilates forests, and perhaps an even more offensive one about George Soros being a Nazi. Soros was actually a Holocaust survivor. Her Islamophobia is perhaps even more pronounced. In February 2019, Green visited the United States Capitol to harass Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, falsely declaring that if they took their oath of office on the Quran instead of the Bible, they are not officially congresswomen. In truth, representatives are not legally required to take their oath with their hand on a Bible. Also that year, in a sign of things to come, Green called for true believers to flood the capital and use violence if necessary to achieve their goals. In case it were not clear already, there is no evidence whatsoever to support any of Marjorie Taylor Greene's claims. There are so many conspiracy theories swirling around in Green's mind that one might find it difficult to imagine that anyone could believe all of them, but it's important to understand that these conspiracy theories touch upon one another through the connective tissue of right-wing ideology. They are entangled in a larger web of belief, and this entanglement of belief is fostered through the interconnection of social conservatism, religiosity, and a sensationalized media. There is a culture, or subculture, that contains qualities that makes it a perfect incubator for conspiracy theories. First, we need to broach the sometimes uncomfortable subject of religion. According to various studies, higher religiosity is directly associated with a higher belief in conspiracy theories. Religiosity allows an individual to be more susceptible to supernatural thinking taking unusual and incomplete data on faith. A study by Professor Inga Jasin Skacha Lati concludes that it is not self-categorization as a person of faith that increases likelihood of belief in conspiracy theories, but the importance attached to that faith. A person of faith for whom their religion is a secondary or minor part of their identity is not much more likely to believe in conspiracy theories, but a person of faith for whom their religion is a primary or major part of their identity is more likely to believe in conspiracy theories. This may explain why a separate study by the Public Religion Research Institute found that white evangelical Protestants are most likely to believe in the QAnon conspiracy theory. When asked about the core tenets of the theory, even without referencing QAnon by name, a staggering 22% of white evangelicals responded that they agreed with its conclusions, and only 21% rejected it outright. By comparison, only 9% of unaffiliated or non-religious Americans agreed with its conclusion, and 57% rejected it outright. Evangelicals believe in the necessity of conversion of being born again in order to receive salvation. It is not a faith about one's personal relationship with God, but about conversion of the masses to a very specific form of Christianity. An unwavering belief that everyone else is wrong breeds a mindset that any action is necessary in bringing the fold into their belief system, and that those who oppose it are not merely outside of their faith, but actively working against God. A number of right-wing conspiracy theories center on religion, specifically the devil. If evangelicals believe that the devil is influencing government or that government officials worship the devil, then hostility, harassment, and outrage feel like reasonable responses. Religiosity and political positions are often intertwined. Reproductive rights, separation of church and state, school prayer, marriage equality, and so forth evangelicals are far more likely to be conservative and republican. Thus, their religion makes evangelicals not only more susceptible to supernatural thinking, but also more susceptible to demonizing anyone who opposes their faith-based political positions. Second, a number of right-wing conspiracy theories are about the government, but it must be understood that the right-wing does not mistrust the government writ large. 
I have said this before in a previous video, but it bears repeating here. Right-wing politicians' condemnation of the federal government as an oppressive force has nothing to do with actual oppression by the government, meaning oppression by the police, oppression of other nations by the military, and so forth. Right-wing politicians' condemnation of the federal government has nothing to do with that. It's all about money. The federal government regulates capitalism through safety laws and the minimum wage, and right-wing politicians and their donors don't want that. That is why right-wing politicians tell voters that government is the problem. Their ideology has nothing to do with government. That is merely a boogeyman when one is required. To use a different ideology for comparison, anarchists want to abolish the state and create a more egalitarian society. The right wants to abolish egalitarianism because they believe that egalitarianism violates their strict social hierarchy, natural law. Therefore, right-wing conspiracy theories about government are never actually about oppression. Instead, right-wing conspiracy theories involving the government are about threats to their strict social hierarchy. In the minds of conspiracy theorists, centrist politicians like Hillary Clinton transform into revolutionary figures who want to open borders and change the racial demographics of the nation. Donors like George Soros transform into radicals who want to change the Christian demographics of the nation. The right does not fear the government, they fear sabotage from within. The sabotage of the United States and its traditions, its hierarchies and they are so terrified of this potential change in the status quo that milk-toast politicians like Joe Biden are seen as communist devil worshippers. The threat that they allegedly pose to their strict social hierarchy, their God-given natural law, motivates belief in the unbelievable. Finally, right-wing media has attached itself to recent conspiracy theories, especially those related to the 2020 election. In a poll conducted in December of last year, only 18% of frequent Fox News viewers accepted the results of the election as legitimate. In a separate poll conducted last year, 43% of adults in the United States trusted Fox News, slightly higher than more legitimate news sources like PBS. Fox News may traffic in erroneous statements and conspiracy, but it has the aesthetic of being legitimate the appearance of being mainstream, and therefore trustworthy. If a conspiracy theory about, say, vaccinations is pushed on Fox News, its viewers might not recognize it for the fraud that it is. They might recognize it as news. A significant portion of Fox News' primary audience does not get its news from anywhere else, except perhaps other right-wing channels like Newsmax and One American News. The consequence of this is that right-wing conspiracy theories feel real because the viewers have been conditioned to trust right-wing media and mistrust other sources. Any attempt to debunk something said on Fox News or Newsmax or OAN is merely fake news and can be discarded. So why does right-wing media do this? Part of it is merely ideological. They have political goals that they wish to accomplish, but the other part is that it's profitable. Enraged, motivated viewers come back for more. Conspiracy theories are a con. There is more money in fear than in hope. In summary, socially conservative ideology, religiosity, and right-wing media that shelters viewers from legitimate news connect with one another to be the perfect incubator for conspiracy theories. In turn, this allows for an entanglement of theories, all related to Democrats, to the devil, and to secret plots. These entangled theories can coalesce into a singular theory about a secret plot by Democrats who worship the devil. In 2017, Marjorie Taylor Greene began posting about devil-worshipping Democrats. This was weeks before the first QAnon post. The basics of this lie already existed for religious right-wing conspiracy theorists. Q simply popularized it, gave it a name, a brand, a motto, and a new central figure, Donald Trump, the savior of children. Green attached herself to this right away. For the uninitiated, QAnon was a 4chan op that went too far. 
baselessly implicating prominent Democrats in an elaborate scheme to capture children for the devil and to drink their precious bodily fluids. Green used to be elbow deep in this conspiracy, but for reasons that will become clear later, even she has stopped talking about it. In December of 2019, Green began her campaign for Congress. Fully behind QAnon and a host of other ridiculous, entangled conspiracy theories, Green separated herself from the pack. What once would have been a liability, or even disqualifying, became her defining feature, and biggest boost to her popularity. The 14th District of Georgia is about as deep red as they come. The Cook Partisan Voting Index lists it as the 10th most Republican district in the nation out of the current total of 435 districts. The further to the right, the better. Green was able to pose with members of the far-right group American Patriots USA and still maintain a lead over her Republican primary opponents. Once sworn in, Green peddled more and more conspiracy theories on the House floor, including wearing a mask that read, Trump won. She also peddled the quickly disproved theory that anti-fascists were behind the Capitol insurrection. They were not. In February, Green harassed Congresswoman Marie Newman by hanging a transphobic sign. Newman's daughter is transgender. Green has been removed from her House committee assignments due to her behavior, but that is not the same as expulsion. She still has a vote, and she still has a tremendous amount of right-wing media attention to platform her views. The Republican Party has long courted the conspiracy theorist right, the fascist right, the far right, but conspiracists were previously manipulated through a wink and a nod, a dog whistle that justified their beliefs and their paranoia. Now the rules have changed. The dog whistles have been replaced with bullhorns. Why is the Republican Party going all in on conspiracy theories? Some undoubtedly believe the conspiracies, most prominently Marjorie Taylor Greene, but some Republicans are simply doing what politicians are trained to do, manipulate voters to stay in power. Despite the Republican Party sometimes being in power in Congress and the White House, party registration and identification with the party have smaller shares of the population than the Democratic Party. According to Pew Research, 33% of all registered voters in the United States identify as Democrats, 29% identify as Republicans, and 34 identify as independents. Most independents lean more toward one party or the other. When taking independents' partisan leanings into account, 49% of all registered voters either identify as Democrats or lean to the Democratic Party, while 44% identify as Republicans or lean to the Republican Party. That's a five-point difference. Put more simply, there are a lot more people in the United States who side with the Democrats than side with the Republicans. The last two Republican presidents only reached the White House due to the Electoral College, not the popular vote. Republicans only have as many senators as they do because a sparsely populated state like Wyoming gets as many senators as a massively populated state like California. Republicans only have as many representatives in the House as they do because of gerrymandering. This is not mere speculation, it's a Republican strategy called Red Map, and the party is openly proud of it. If representatives and senators were portioned through population, Congress would always be controlled by the Democratic Party, and the Republicans are keenly aware of this. If Republicans lost even a modest amount of voters going forward, their chances of retaking Congress would diminish, and their chances of retaking the presidency would evaporate. The Republican Party has a comparatively less diverse base of voters, they do not have a big tent. Because of their lower registration and their smaller tent, the party has never turned away even the most dangerous voters. And with their party now out of power, the more subtle acknowledgement of the conspiracy theory right has turned into a public courtship. The Republican Party's interest in energizing the conspiracy theorist right has less to do with belief and more to do with mathematics. They cannot win without them. Now, what can we do about this? On an electoral level, not a whole lot. Unsurprisingly, Republicans who are conspiracy theory believers or conspiracy theory manipulators are in deep red districts or states. Remember, Green's district is deep red. She cannot possibly be voted out by a Democrat or an independent, which means the only way for her to ever leave office is through a Republican primary challenge or more unusual circumstances that would prevent her from performing her duties. Expulsion from Congress is theoretically possible and has been suggested by at least one Democrat, but it's extremely unlikely due to the great partisan divide. 
It requires a two-thirds vote, thus the only method in which to combat the manipulators of right-wing conspiracy theories is to combat the theories themselves and to confront the true believers. Unfortunately, this is an incredible challenge. An individual who was previously not exposed to right-wing conspiracy theories but learns about a ridiculous, unfounded theory over the course of a weekend could potentially be saved from going down the rabbit hole. A friend or loved one could explain why the theory is not true and provide sources that debunk the theory. However, an individual for whom their conspiracies are part of their identity, their ideology, their culture, and their personal creed cannot be so easily swayed. Right-wing conspiracy theories are not built upon a foundation of evidence in the first place. Remember, their theories only feel culturally true, and because of this, in order to give up the conspiracy theories, the individual will have to give up their culture. To a right-wing conspiracy theorist, believing that Joe Biden simply won an election has greater consequences than merely accepting a Democrat is now president. Democrats have been president before. To a right-wing conspiracy theorist, believing Joe Biden won the election also means that the people who they trusted were lying to them this whole time, and that all of the interconnected, entangled conspiracy theories must also be lies. The entanglement of right-wing conspiracy theories creates circumstances in which rejecting one means disentangling them all. Because of this, right-wing conspiracy theorists will not allow for the possibility that even some of their most ludicrous beliefs could be false. Learning that everything they ever believed is a lie is too traumatic to consider. On a wider scale, misinformation in public spaces and the internet can only be combated through real information in those same spaces. Many of QAnon's true believers have left the movement, partly because Trump is no longer in office and therefore incapable of fulfilling the prophecy or whatever, but also because of a series of informative, popular documentaries exposing the origins of the conspiracy theory. Even Green is basically done with QAnon, at least in public. As for Green's career in politics, her future is uncertain. She might flame out, spectacularly, but representatives in their districts often embed themselves there for years, even decades. Green must never be allowed to become normalized. Once that happens, the needle will move, and it will be difficult to ever move it back.